Today we're going to get rid of the dandelions and the clover and the other broadleaf weeds out of our yard. Some of the drone views you'll see will show that, well, we've got a lot of work yet to do on our yard. We're also going to go in depth, taking a look at this 60 gallon PTO sprayer and the foam marker kit. So sit back, press that subscribe button and that little bell, and we hope you enjoy it. A lot of wind here in Indiana, especially in the spring, and we've been struggling trying to find a good time to spray our yard. We just, the dandelions just seem to take it over if we don't spray it. Although, because we sprayed it last spring, they're not as bad uh, this spring, so that's good. I think we're going to have to start doing this in the fall. They say that maybe you have a little better result in the fall. We may do it one each this year. We got a different sprayer this year. I want to talk a little about it. It's a three-point hitch mounted sprayer for Johnny. It holds 60 gallons. It's a PTO sprayer, so it's a step above the smaller electric sprayers like I've always used. You've seen on our channel before where we use a little pull type sprayer meant for a, a lawn tractor or could be pulled by anything really. It's an electric pump and that does the job for a small yard. It, it, it worked fine for us. There wasn't a lot of flexibility with it. In fact, we spent a little bit more to even be able to adjust the pressure. Some of them don't even have pressure adjustment. This sprayer is much higher technology. Now it's not quite as high tech as the one we showed with the Gator last year. That one was, well it was out of range price wise, uh, so I don't think a lot of those are sold. But it had rate control where if you went faster or slower it adjusted the rate. That thing is really cool. This one's a little more basic than that, but it still has some features that I'd like to share with you. Now, I chose the 150-inch boom. I don't think the boom is actually 150 inches, but 150-inch spray width, because uh, the nozzles are right at the end of the boom. There's also a 180-inch option. The 150-inch only has a single lever here to turn it on and off. The 180-inch has two levers, so you can do each half separately. I didn't know that difference when I requested the 150. I just thought that 150 would be plenty wide for me, but it probably would be nice to have two separate valves because this is pretty wide. I feel like I'm overlapping a lot, uh, especially when you're working around the obstacles in the yard. It also has a very nice nozzle. This is an upgraded nozzle, ham nozzle, so that you can get into those hard to reach places. Much nicer than the one that I've had on my small one. Most little sprayers have these. This one has a lot of adjustment here for uh, whether it wants to shoot a, a nice directed shot or whether you want it to, to spray a, a wider area. High quality hose and high quality nozzle as well. Here is a fresh water tank. I believe this is a safety feature. If we'd happen to get into the chemicals, I've got fresh water right here that I can rinse really quickly. Rinse my eyes, rinse my hands, whatever I might need. Again, the, it's PTO driven, so you'll notice that I'm running full throttle, just like I always run uh, with PTO attached implements. The pressure is adjusted right here. This is the valve to turn it on, the lever. This is probably my least favorite part of it so far is that I have to reach directly behind me to turn it on and off. I need old neighbor Bob. Neighbor Bob would uh, concoct something so that I could get this up by the tractor. But this works well. It's just a little bit hard to reach back there. You'll see that in the video. This next feature, when I first thought about it, I thought this is overkill. No small lawn sprayer that I've seen has this feature. It is a foam marker kit. So when I turn this on, the ends of the sprayer drop out foam. The foam marker is easy to use. I just put the foam concentrate in. 80 to 1 is the mixture, so 2 ounces per gallon. And it's got an electrical switch I'll show you in a minute. But I turn it on and it starts spurting out the foam on each side. When I'm going at what I consider full speed, uh, it leaves a, a splotch of foam probably every 10 to 15 feet. In weather like this, it stays plenty long. I'm able to see where I've been. And of course, that's combined with knowing in my head in general where I've been. So it, it just really helps me to, to remind me what I'm doing. Probably more useful than what I thought it would be. Now, farmers use these for years and years and years. They eventually stopped using them when they got GPS. And now with the auto steer and the GPS, the, the sprayers are so sophisticated that not only will it guide itself, it will turn on and off specific nozzles if it happens to have an overlap. So if you go crossways and you've only sprayed a part of it, it will turn off. Now ours won't do that, but that's what the big ag stuff does now. So if Tom misses a spot this wide when he's spraying, 
he can just drive back through with that sprayer and it'll turn on the one nozzle necessary to spray that one spot. That, I think that's pretty cool. It saves a lot of chemical. They don't have uh, any, any overlap, any doubling, any risk of, of hurting the crop that way. So it works really well. We don't have that kind of fancy technology here, but what we have is what the farmers used to use. And that's still pretty fancy for a uh, lawn sprayer. The foam marker kit is powered by an electric motor. Uh, the PTO powers the main spray pump, but we keep all the liquid separate for the foam marker kit, and it's powered by a small electric pump. So this cord runs all the way up here. There's a switch that I've actually used a zip tie to attach here. They provided enough cable for me to run all the way to the battery, do all the extra work of, of routing that cable through the tractor. What I've done and what I'm beginning to, to like we may pursue this some more. You might leave a, a comment if you think this is something you would use. But I've had this power connector for the TKV20 back here, and now this is the third item I've used it for. I bought connectors that were compatible with it. I used it for my original cab. I used it for the TKV20, of course. That's what it came with. And now I added one of these connectors for this spray pump. This allows me not to have to run any cords up to the tractor. Once I've got that TKV20 cable run through there, I can use the rest of these attachments just by snapping in the connector. If you guys are interested in having a relatively high amperage, I think it's 30 amps cable running to the back of your tractor that you then could use on multiple attachments, let us know in the comments below. I'd like to hear some of the applications you might have in mind, and I might be able to work with a manufacturer to get that standard cord that then we could uh, package individually or package the connectors so that you could connect other attachments to it. Just seemed like a nifty idea to me now that I've used it on the third attachment. This thing has a high quality liquid filled pressure gauge. I was impressed by that. The pressure is adjusted with this knob here and then it's got kind of a jam nut that goes against it that way it won't adjust on its own. And again this is the valve to turn it off and on. You can turn it either way, away or towards you to turn it on. Let's talk a little bit about the chemical I'm using. Uh, most lawn chemicals to, to get rid of weeds and grass, broadleaf weeds and grass, start with 2,4-D. That's usually the, the, the primary chemical. This one's no different than that. A lot of people use a chemical called Trimec. I've used that in the past. On the advice of my cousin in Southern Illinois, I'm using a chemical called Crossbow. And again, it's got 2,4-D in it and it's got something else with it, Crossbow. I'm applying at the rate of about two quarts per acre. It's a little hard for me to tell for sure that that's what I'm applying, a little bit of a guess. The chart for this unit went down to uh, 25 PSI and I'm running down at 20 PSI because I, I just don't want to put that much water on and I want to try to keep it from drifting too much. So the, the higher pressure you use, the more your chemical is going to drift. It, it sprays out of there and it'll have finer droplets and that will uh, potentially drift when the wind catches it. So in order to try to keep the drift to the minimum, remember I told you it's windy today. Well, it's least windy it's been in quite some time, but it's still windy. We're trying to keep the sprayer relatively low and I'm trying to keep that pressure down. I'm intending to apply about 15 gallon per acre of mixture and overall two quarts per acre of the crossbow itself. Now, don't take that as what you should apply. I want no responsibility if you kill all the grass in your yard. Although, if it's in Indiana, I'll come help you clean it up. That's about the only guarantee I can give, right, Christy? Right. So. What do you think, Martha? We're going to get to see some nice drone shots of the sprayer in action here. Unfortunately for me, you also get to see the mess that we call our yard. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that about a year and a half ago we moved to this property. As with any new property, there's going to be issues that you have to deal with, some that you planned and, well, some that you didn't plan. We've detailed a lot of those issues in previous episodes, so I won't go into them here. But if you haven't seen them, I would encourage you to go to our channel page, then click the video tab, and you can sort all of our videos in order. Watching our progress all the way back from the year 2015 has proven quite interesting for a lot of our viewers. These large piles here you see along the bank are the result of some work we did well, over a year ago now. We borrowed a Case CX-80, and we dug out the edge of that pond bank there. We removed cattails and willow sprouts and dug the pond deeper along that bank so that the cattails wouldn't grow back. We've regraded and reseeded part of it, but we still have more to do. Now here's another challenge that we haven't tackled. These ditches are partially caused by erosion and partially caused by muskrats, we believe. Looks like someone has put some rock right in there in the past. When we get a chance, we'll fill those in. One of the reasons we share this is so you can see how we attempt to prioritize. In my opinion, one of the worst 
problems that can face a DIY type person is the sense that they need to get everything done and get it all done now. Adding tight time constraints can spoil the fun of about any project. We would encourage you to set priorities, work on the most important stuff first. Don't let these type of projects get in the way of your family or close friends. Enjoy the journey rather than just rushing to get to the destination. As for our yard, we hope to see it improve over time, but it won't be perfect for years to come. What's going on? Well, I put the drone on active track, and I thought that it would not fly into anything on active track. But apparently I was wrong. So, yeah. The cats are up there above you. Why don't you have them get it down? I should. Ugh. Boy, it's really stuck. With your right hand? Yeah, yeah, but I gotta have it. It's... Grab it with the other hand. Oh, okay, you got it. It's a good thing I didn't mind climbing trees as a kid. I may have broke it. It just folded it off, probably. Oh. They're a little whacked up. We have extra blades, right? Yeah. You gonna let me down from here, or are you gonna make me stay up here because of what I did? I was kind of wondering why I had the grapple on for spraying, but <laughs> now I know. Yeah. Here we go. It's not very comfortable to sit on. No. Don't dump me out. This large area between the tractor and the soybean field here on the right side of the screen takes the brunt of the flooding. Last year, a lot of that grass was killed. I overseeded it a few weeks ago. I have pretty good looking grass out there, but we'll see if it makes it. It flooded again a week or so ago. Another update on this, we will have a subdivision coming out in that field. It'll be several years, but hopefully that'll fix our drainage issue. I'm out of chemical mixture. I guess I'm gonna have to go get a little bit more. And this is just about right. And you know, I don't have exactly an idea how much we've covered, but my mixture was supposed to be enough for four acres. We think we have about five and a half acres. So I think this is about right. Some of this area up here floods as well. I think I have a way to divert some of this water towards the drain at the other end of the pond. If we get time, we'll work on that later this summer. On the left here is the area around the willow tree where Christy cleaned out with the battery-powered chainsaw. And then you also see what she mowed with the four-foot brush mower the other day. This is beginning to look a lot better. We have some stumps to grind around the willow tree there, and we have some low-hanging limbs to get rid of where I'm spraying now. Overall, we're beginning to see some progress. It's going to take it a long time, and you're going to see it move slowly, but that's okay. we got plenty of time, hopefully, and if we don't have plenty of time, well, it didn't need to be done. The area here between the tractor and the camera is where we put our geothermal in last year. we got good grass growing there. I give the foam marker system a 10 out of 10. I mean, I was laughing about it, thinking it was unneeded. Now that I've actually seen it in action, this is a nice feature. I, I don't have any idea how much it costs on its own, but I, I might even consider putting one of those on a less expensive sprayer because when I'm doing a yard this size, I have trouble remembering exactly where I was. Sometimes even when I turn right around, I would, I, I would wanna go back over the same pass and I'd be, oh, hold it, I've already been here. Very, very nice. The sprayer itself, of course, this is a high-end John Deere sprayer. It's gonna be great, and it is. I really have no complaints, of course, after using the rate controlled sprayer uh, on the gator, yeah, I wish it were rate controlled. Maybe one other thing that I might wish for in the dream world is that the foamer would turn on and off with the sprayer. But that's the only, only things I can really think of. This was a joy to use. It really was. Mary, I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you guys enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Mary doesn't really know what to think of the drone. Martha would run away from it, but Mary would stand his ground, 